When God made light, he did it in a scientific way. He provided this universe with an energy that keeps it running, keeps it going all the time, and that energy is part and parcel of everything. And light was magnetism spun until it shone and became light. Of all things, being of one substance, they are all magnetism in a different form. The first thing that happened was, God said, let there be light. Now, <clears throat> when God made light, he did it in a scientific way. I suppose the first light he made was his own energy. But he provided this universe with an energy that keeps it running, keeps it going all the time, and that energy is part and parcel of everything. So when he created light, he created it with something. That something was magnetism. Now, I want you to think on, all through uh, my talk with you, of all things being of one substance, they are all magnetism in a different form. If you can accept that and go along with me, you're going to find a lot easier to understand me. Doesn't matter what it is, just say to yourself, okay, I know what he's talking about, Everything is the same medium. It is all the same energy in a new form. And light was magnetism spun until it shone and became light. The light itself, uh, being magnetism, uh, was in itself the beginning and the end You've often heard people say, uh, from dust to dust. That's a true saying, but we can go a little bit farther than that. We can go from the beginning of light, from magnetism, right through to the end. In other words, in simple words, like from alpha to omega, the full cycle. From dust to dust, energy, light, and everything else is made, and back to the same thing again back to the energy. And um, <clears throat> if, you, if you think of light uh, in the sense that uh, it's not just something to lighten the day with, but a material to make things with, I'm going to show you how it does actually create other things. And during that time that I'm talking about, I want you to realize that we moved from one thing to another in different amounts of light, and they became different things. But first of all, we have energy in the form of light. When I mention light from here on in, whether I say magnetism or light, I'm talking about the same thing. Light is just a, a little farther forward than magnetism. Now, if you look at this chart up here, chart A. Here's the sun, and here are some of the planets. Now, the sun is like nuclear energy, and it emanates energy out through into the universe. Now, the energy radiating from the sun is positive. Any energy that radiates is positive. The energy from the sun radiates towards, we'll say, Venus. You see this little curl here? That's a, a conical-shaped spiral, and it's going counterclockwise. Now, that does something. It takes this positive energy from the sun and turns it counterclockwise so that it gravitates into the North Pole of each planet and makes it negative energy. So you have energy, positive, gravitating into that tiny spot of the North Pole, and it becomes negative energy. Now, it continues through the Earth itself, spiraling down through the center of the Earth, 
until it reaches about the equator. And then it starts to open its spiral up again, like this one, and it's going the other way around now, it's going clockwise. In other words, it was gravitating counterclockwise, still gravitating here till it reaches halfway, and then it is uh, still turning just the same, but now it's throwing it away again. It is now radiating. What's happening is, energy from the sun goes out to feed the planet, and the planet passes it through and feeds it back to the sun. They regenerate each other. Now, you might think that is um, hard to understand how this energy going counterclockwise comes out of here clockwise. Now, if I had a bicycle and I stood it on its handlebars and its saddle, both side onto you, and I turned the wheel clockwise, and then I walked around the other side of the bicycle and I had a look which way it was going, it is now going counterclockwise. It's going the same way. So that if you were in the northern hemisphere, see the water go down your drain, and it's going counterclockwise, if you could stand on your head and see it from the same position as those in the southern hemisphere, it's going clockwise. It did not change its spiral, it just went, gravitated into a small amount and spread out again to go to a large amount. Where it came from, it went back to. We have a system going on which God created whereby a wave of energy gravitating does not finish its gravitation until the wave of radiation begins. In other words, you've got uh, a, a wave where this would be just finishing here and this one starts before it gets to it. In other words, one wave starts before the other finishes. There's a reason for that. If something is gravitating, before it gets to the end of its gravitation and the radiation starts, you have something like that. One starting before they are quite finished. And because of that little gap in between the two, there's no gap really, but that sort of hesitation, then you have continuum. You see how clever God was, he made everything to keep going forever and ever. And that wave break there means to say that this system will go on all the time. Now you might say if you are, if you're gravitating something and you're radiating it at the same speed, which will always happen, gravitation and radiation always the same speed, but one started just after the other, or just before the other one finished. And so it leaves you with what you formed by gravitation and it has not dissipated because the radiation didn't start till after that was formed. So we have a continuum there. 